Today I'm sharing with you all the garden jobs I've been carrying out in my garden in late winter. So for me here in February, you could wait a little bit longer to do those if you have a really cold climate, for example. It really depends on what stage your garden is at. We haven't had frost in a little while and as you can tell, we have so many spring bulbs that have sprouted, have buds all over them. It's really going to be a beautiful show here very soon, I think. This is not an exhaustive list, but the jobs that I've been able to tackle so far. We also had a couple of storms in between, namely Storm Eunice. So there has been extra cleaning up needed in the garden, so I took care of all that. Let's jump right in the job. Well, full disclosure, I had my Christmas freeze up until very recently. I really enjoyed it. I put it together earlier in December. Really love the mix of plants, but the holly was passed over. And also, I'm really ready for spring. This is how it looked like earlier in the season. I absolutely love the combination. I've decided to leave the moss ring until I'm ready for a spring design. Wreaths are not just for Christmas. As we're heading towards spring, I'm cleaning up some sea deads I had left up for wildlife over winter. This is my Autumn Joy Sedum. I really enjoy that plant and it's already started growing quite a bit. So I'm just giving it a bit of a haircut. And also, I had so many foxglove seedlings actually across the whole garden. So I'm just saving those and I'll replant them somewhere else in the garden or save them for next year. It's also time to cut back deciduous grasses so grasses where the foliage is not evergreen i'm just cutting them all the way back to the ground and it's important to do so before they push out a lot of new growth we really enjoyed that little selection of winter planters over the winter but the cabbage and the little rosemary i had used are no longer viable so i'm just replacing them quickly with a beautiful la board nature i really love those blooms and i also took the opportunity to spruce up my little table i put this together back in the fall and it needed a new centerpiece after the coleus froze and i think that little pine was perfect If you've watched my bell planting video, I ended up adding some chicken wire like this to protect all the pots, but also part of my flower bed. But now we have a lot of tulips that are already starting to grow. So it's time to remove that protection. I'm going to save those pieces, flatten them and reuse them next year. It's still time to prune your repeat flowering shrub and climbing roses if you haven't done so. I already published a video on the topic on my channel where I show how I prune my three David Austin shrub roses and give all the details of the steps that I'm taking. They were actually still blooming in January. That was pretty incredible. It's pretty easy to prune roses. All you have to do basically is take them down by a third and make sure you make the cut in a slanted way above an outward facing bud to keep the shape and prevent water damage. Well, it's not without its risks. <laughs> this is footage from a couple of weeks after the pruning. My gorgeous wild Eve is pushing some new growth. I'm really happy about that. And the lady gardener also is doing well. Lots of new growth, lots of new shoots. The tissue healed over nicely. The next project is we need to make sure we can retrain this properly to the top of the fence. It's a gorgeous Clematis Armandi. It's starting to bloom. 
so beautiful but it kind of fell onto my mini cold frame so it means the ceilings are not getting a lot of light and actually there's the panel that kind of detached so we need to take care of that too so i'm just going to grab some wire and attach it on the other side and kind of like retrain the clematis If you've missed the most epic planting project on the channel, I'll link it up below and in the description box. But now, after all winter, it's time for another little bit of a cleanup. The lambs here need the air cut, I also cut down the viola and gave a general grooming to the area. I actually also planted some foxglove seedlings around the planter, so I think it's going to be really pretty later in the season. Well, of course, my little helpers came to the rescue. It's time to prune my little apple tree. It's been in that pot for several years now and has bloomed in December. If you watched the December garden tour, you may have seen that this apple tree was blooming. I think it got so confused with the weird temperatures, but you can see now like the trunk is getting quite thick the pruning from the year before and the new shoots that got out so a lot of buds forming so i'm just going to take after that tree remove those smaller weak stems that are not um that we don't want to encourage essentially and this one also you can notice is growing inward towards the center of the tree and we want to encourage a goblet shape so strong branches that grow outward reduce it by about a third and going to make a slanted cut or like just to cut um, above a healthy pair of bud like this one here. So about a third I think would be over here. And this is what it looks like after. Still not <laughs> really easy to see. The gorgeous indoor displays that I had prepared are gone over now, so I'm just replanting the bulbs in some plastic containers and I'm going to plant them at the allotment because there's no more space in the garden. But they would be really nice also in a garden border. Just be aware that they may not bloom as well as new bulbs would just because they expended a lot of energy blooming um, when being forced, but that's still worth a try. February is definitely a heavy sewing month. There's a lot more light and a lot of plants to get started to have a beautiful show come summer. In that video, I'm sharing my seed starting kit and some of the varieties I'm trying this year, some of which I have experience with and some other than I knew to me. If you only start one flower from seed this year, it should totally be sweet peas. They're extremely easy to grow 
They produce a mass of scented flowers. They're climbers, so they're perfect for a fence that gets at least four to five hours of sun a day. A couple of weeks after sowing, we have a lot of germination on our sweet peas and also on our cosmos. A couple of echinacea also joined the party, so everything is going well and I'm about to do more sowing. This is the last job I'm sharing with you today, but certainly not the least. Mulching borders is really important to retain moisture, get a head start on the weed control. Here I'm just using some bark, but you could use also old compost. Make sure it's a thick layer so that it works as intended. If you haven't had time or it's still too cool in your area to prune plants, you have a lot of time in March to do so and sometimes all the way to the beginning of April. It really depends on your garden and what the climate is like for you. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to see what I do in my small garden to prepare it. And I hope your own garden preparations are going well. See you next time. Bye. Hi, Sushi. Hi. Look how gorgeous these blooms are. Look at all those bugs. <laughs>